So, you know, the junk man's wise. Uh, all right. So, some of the foreign gold marks it in, in uh, percentages. But not much. You won't, you know. But if you fill it, fill with it a little while, you, you know, if you're going along, you might find it. But that's why I encourage you, if you're, if you're wanting to buy the stuff, you know, buy something. You can start at that broad state level, kind of, where you might get it cheap. But, uh, but first of all, sound the alarm to, you, to your folks and relatives and yourself and, and go through your jewelry boxes and whatever you got. And what you got? Evaluate it and hold on to it. And add to it if you can. Add, add something to it. So, uh, I think I got a. Do we, do anybody, do we, do we need to go through this? Anybody want to weigh a ring and figure out? You'd be surprised how much they were. But, uh, now, like, like Allison's the diamond seal, so it's going to be the diamond. It's going to push your ring value way up. All we'd be able to do is figure it out. But if anybody has a gold weighing band or something, oh, yeah. you want us to weigh it, we can tell you what the, the value is on it. We can't do much with a stone. Mm -hmm. No stones. And uh, this is what, four, what, probably 14 carat? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's say 14 divided by 24. It's on your slide before that thing, right? 
Well, this is practically worthless. This used to be our. I'll tell you one more story. <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when they were manipulating the silver prices, the gold went really high. I don't remember. But they were running all these big ads to buy gold. The companies. So I got to look at the ads and I told Bob, I called Bob, Bob and I were always saying, I said, Bob, I said, I got an idea. I said, these gold companies have missed the gold mine. I said, well, I said they're not advertising for class one. I said, every swinger, every soul that we know that got to link it, made it to a junior in high school got a class one. I said, there are thousands of them here in Snackville. I said, if we could start buying those, we could really make us some money. So I said, I tell you what, let's run us a test, a test ad. So we ran an ad. I said, buying gold glass rings, men's $25, ladies $15. I said, after a while, I said, if we get any takers, if anybody will mail us their ring, that'll tell us, and then we'll run it for a phone, we'll put our phone number and we'll start picking them up. I got three of them in the mail. I believe it's three. We didn't say size or anything. So I mailed them the, the check. You know. And we started, we ran to the head of the paper and they started buying them. And we bought dozens of them. And what we did, the smallest one was worth about $50. Because it was my, you know, at the, the style of the paper. And the ladies, the cheapest one was worth about 30 So we, you know, we figured it, and then we'd get one like this, and, you know, and even back then, they were just unbelievably profitable. And people just, we had landladies call us that had four or five that had been left in rent houses, ladies that were waitresses that had been up there for and bought them, and on and on and on. And so we really did well. We, we bought and sold primarily flash rings for, I believe, three months. And then we hit a little, we hit a little snag. We were operating on borrowed money. <laughs> and uh, the check that our gold buyer sent, two of our checks bounced, that the guy sent us, and it scared us. So we pulled all our ads, and, but it was just a technicality, but it stopped us from the flow. And, and to be honest, if we'd have thought big, if we'd have gone big and got somebody to back us, we could have probably got a little rich with that one. Uh, because at that point, Time the gold buyers had just ignored that in their ads all over. Uh, but it was a real blessing to us, and we even went uh, and said, you know how they come and set up at the motels and have them bring their stuff in? Get this. Me and Bob and Bill and Leslie, we did that in Big Spring, Texas. We went to us and said, bring all your gold, bring all your silver, bring all your stuff. In the, we were in a little room at a hotel out there on the interstate, and well, they brought us a lot of stuff. We brought all kinds of stuff, and I did it. And, and while we were doing it, in that few months, we made enough to build on our house, and for Bob and Leslie to get enough to make a down payment and get in and buy their first house. So it was, it was a blessing to us. It really was. But uh, people would ask us, "What do you want with those old flash rings?" We had a standard adventure. All we're just buying them for the gold. That's all we see. And we would take them, and they had, we had a deal out in my, talking about wells, out in the well house. And I had a deal that, this little metal deal that you'd slide it up there and take a hammer and rake the stones up. And then we'd send them to the scrap. And the floor of that thing was just covered with that part of the glass. <laughs> but it was, it was good while it lasted. All right, go through on the 10 carat and see what we got. Do that with the, uh, do that process for 10. Well, yeah, that thing was 30.9, 31 grams. Wow. wow. At 10 carat? Yeah. Yeah, I never understood this. Kind of like boots. You go buy a new pair of boots. They're the same price for my little foot and my friend. They go in there and hit a Boots would be about this big. I never felt like I was getting the, the same thing. Yeah, on our class rings, there was one guy in our class I could drop my ring through his. Yeah. He was a great big old guy. Man, that, that, he was, you know, and ours was, I think they were all like $69. Yeah. 
Give you a ring away. Did you, did you <laughs> so, what? Is it oh, it's awesome. oh, God. 30, it was? I thought this was 14 carats. Yeah. So 31.1, right? No. 30.95. It's not oh, 39. Okay. But but y'all get y'all get the yeah, idea. You get you get the idea of what we're doing. If you if you if you bought a ring or have a ring at home, you can figure out how much the the gold in it is worth. Do you think? So if you were to get desperate and want to sell your ring to one of these guys, they're going to offer you about that. Hey, I'll trade rings with you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what is really interesting is when you know hey, that Jenny wants to take it in somewhere and see what they offer. That's right. You don't have to say it. Just be curious. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say this, that I have I have found a place that pays for you. What? I have found a place that pays for you. They'll pay, they're paying like 95% of And I've sold them a little bit of stuff. Because they will test it, and they're, they've been very honest with me. Like I was at a garage sale one morning, and a lady had is in Austin, was, and uh, I was uh, always looking at the jewelry. Always looking at the jewelry. Always looking at it, no matter what, how goofy it looks. Look at it, and so she had I don't know a ring and a or going. She had a couple of chains that didn't have a clasp on them. And she said, those are gold chains. She said, oh, they're just broken. They're gold chains. And she just wanted $5 for the two chains and the ring. And so I bought it. So I took these by my place that I had found. And I got them to test them. And I already weighed them and they to the penny what they were worth. And I didn't know whether they were 14 or 10. And this, and this office says, this chain is 18 years. And they'll give you a blah 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 for it. And so I'm running it through my head. I said, well, I have no way of marking it, no way of knowing, you know. So to me, it seemed, it seemed like that they were close, you know. They were, like I said about the coins, they were making a fair profit, so I sold it. So there are a few places, some places, and I still do business with those guys. Because of them, they're good guys. They're in there willing to make a, a fair profit. But I, I'm saying that's very unusual. Because, uh, and some of the guys, some of the people are that way. They'll, there's a, a silver and gold buyer in San Angelo that I've been dealing with now for about six years, and he, he's fair. He, he's fair. So, so I'm not branding 100% of them, but most of them are going are to put it on you if they get a chance. And, and the thing is, you just need to be able to recognize it. Mineral gold, some form gold. So we, we've done this one, we've evaluated, y'all know pretty much basically everything there is to know about it. So, you know, you, you guys, you know, now think of this, and then a few, what have we been walking, talking, several go since lunch, right? So, since two, so in two and a half hours, the, you guys have more knowledge than many antique and they were in the right. That's pretty, pretty awesome, really. That's how simple it is and how, how much uh, confusion there is about it. So I, I just uh, congratulate you. Same, same old deal, I'll be honest. 
work up the knowledge chain and down the knowledge chain. If you're selling something, you want to sell it to the smart guys that know what it's worth. If you're buying something, you want to buy it from the less smart that have no idea what they're doing. Antique shops, pawn shops, thrift shops, flea markets for all sales. And, and I'd really like to know if y'all find anything. If you, uh, a lot of people that, that in my experience that I've that, that worked, uh, that I've talked with, and what, you, know, you know what, they don't have the energy or the patience to do this. And so they don't usually, they don't. I'm talking about just individuals I've shared with. Uh, same deal, 